Hello everyone and welcome to a new video in our IFS Cloud video series. My name is Marcel Aushan, I'm an IFS consultant and today I will want to show you how to work with the warehouse navigator in IFS Cloud and how to set up a few different inventory locations. In our previous videos we created a customer, we created a part number, we cre also created a supplier, so basically we have all the data that we need in order to start doing transactions in the system. But the only thing that we are missing at the moment is defining some inventory locations because obviously our inventory parts, which are physical parts, yeah, the bicycle that we will purchase from our supplier and sell to our customer, is a physical part that needs to be stored physically in a warehouse. Yeah? So today we will have a look at some possibilities that IFS Cloud offers in this area. But before going into the system, I would want us to have a look at the concept of a warehouse yeah? because the warehouse has a certain structure yeah? and we will see in IFS that we can define for each site that we have, we can define one or more warehouses, yeah? which is the physical place, building where you store your goods. And then that warehouse, that building, will have a few bays, yeah, the so-called aisles, if you will. Yeah, and we can see here in the image. And then each bay could have a few rows, yeah, depending how big your bay is, could have one or more rows. And then again, each bay could have one or more tiers. Yeah, tiers, if you will, are the different levels that you can stack up. Yeah, different uh, products on. Yeah, and finally, the combination of your bay, row and tier will give you your actual bin. Yeah, so if we have a look at this example, so our bin is located at tier 10, row 10 and bay 30. Yeah, so this combination of bay, row and tier will give us our unique bin. Yeah. And this is what we will uh, try to do in the system. And without further ado, I will just jump into the system now and we will have a look at how we can create the warehouse and then some inventory locations. Yeah, so basically these bins are what we call inventory locations and we can give it also a location number. Okay, so we go directly into the application now and we come to a page that's called Warehouse Navigator. Yeah. Now, there are a couple of pages where we can do different things in IFS Cloud, where we can define our warehouse, where we can define our base, rows, tiers and uh, locations. Uh, but we also have this main page called Warehouse Navigator. And basically this is a nicer way to see all the data together yeah so here we could from here we could do everything basically and yeah? define our warehouses for this site for the site DE011 we can define our warehouses and also our locations we can also have an overview which parts are in stock in this warehouse we could also drill down through the different uh, structures like bays tiers and rows yeah but the first thing that we would need to do once we come to this screen yeah we have a brand new site d011 no warehouses no locations the first thing that we would need to do is to start creating a warehouse yeah so you remember warehouse is the top level like the, the building if you will so i will just press the plus sign and then i have a few fields that are mandatory warehouse id i will just call it main and then description i will just say main warehouse yeah, in our setup, we will just have one warehouse, but obviously for each site, you can have multiple warehouses. Okay, yeah, we can even specify some dimensions for the different bins. We won't do that. So at the moment, we just want to create a warehouse so that inside the warehouse, we can, um, we can create the structure. Yeah, we have different options here. If we want to block receipts or if we want to block mixing of different part numbers yeah 
all these kind of things but we will not go into these details at the moment all we want to do here is be able to create a warehouse and then inside the warehouse we will create some locations so i will just save here yeah and now you see in our structure yeah below the site we have the warehouse main but of course if we expand there should not be anything at the moment no? we have here additional functionality we can copy different base from a different warehouse yeah so if we have multiple warehouses and we just want to they all have the same structure we can copy paste from different warehouses so it's easier to set up our warehouses yeah. but what we want to do at this moment is just go to locations once we have set up our warehouse yeah, we just go to the locations and here we will try to set up new locations let me switch to table view because we can see quite a lot of columns here so uh, first of all what do we need when in order to be able to do some transactions in the system yeah so we need a few locations that would be mandatory so in order to do procurement and to receive the finished good the the goods physical goods in an arrival area we need to have an arrival location defined yeah you know, with the location type arrival there's a specific uh, location type used by fs cloud then if you want to ship or deliver some goods to the customer we need a shipping location yeah, a staging area where we do the shipment preparation and loading the trucks, for example. And then additionally, if we also want to store the goods in our warehouse, we also need the so-called picking locations. Yeah? In the picking locations, this is where all our available quantities will be. And from there, we can do our reservations for, for the different demands that we will have in the system. Yeah? For example, if we have a customer order, we need to reserve the material first and the material needs to be in a picking location in order for us to be able to reserve it. Yeah. So without further ado, I will go ahead and try to create a few locations inside my main warehouse. So I will just press the plus sign. Select my main warehouse yeah, and then locations. Press the plus sign. Yeah, and you will see the system will give us the next number in the sequence for location number. We can change this, so this doesn't have to be a number. It can also be an alphanumeric um, field. But first and foremost, we need to set up the location group. In this case, we will just say this is an arrival. Let's start with arrivals. Yeah, this is an arrival location. And let's just call it like that for ease of use, arrival. Yeah, so we called it arrival, also description, we can say arrival zone. And then we need to say in which bay, row, tier or bin it is. And you remember, yeah, this, this combination will give us the unique yeah, location where the, the physical lo location of the, the exact bin. So for bay, let's maybe say I don't know, bay, bay 100, yeah, so it will be created on the spot. Row, let's say, row, again, maybe 200. And for tier, let's say it's tier 3, yeah, so level 3 bin we can leave it like that with a dash we can save it uh, we have in tier we have some leading spaces yes we have some spaces here okay now we've removed the spaces and we could save it yeah, and now we have our arrival zone location and we can even print the location number barcode usually you will print them and stick them on the physical location because most of the times you will need to scan that location when you do something with a scanner yeah? doing transactions in the system with a scanner moving or picking material you will normally do that with the scanner 
Yeah, let's go ahead and create a second location, which this time we will create a location for shipping that we will use in a later process. Let's say this is shipping, shipping area, uh, shipping area, and then Bay, uh, let's say it's 200. Again, no leading spaces sh are allowed. 300. And let's say maybe tier four. And we can save it. Good, we have our shipping and arrival location. One last thing that we need. <coughs> it would be the picking location. So I will choose location group picking and I will even call it the picking location number and picking zone. Yeah, so basically in my examples, I will put everything that I receive with the purchase orders in the picking zone so that it's available for reservation by other, um, other demand sources. <coughs> Let's say Bay 300, row 100, and tier 5. And what's important here is that it's a unique combination. Otherwise, you will see, if you try to create the same combination, it will say that the location already exists, so you can't really do that. I will just come here and save it. Yeah, and then if we refresh, now we can see here we have our different structures. So you have we have the bay 100, which contains row 200 and tier 3. Yeah, and here we have the bin with dash. And same for bay 200 and bay 300. Yeah, so we have our structure, if you will. But this is a very, very simple structure. We just basically created the minimum location types that are needed uh, by the system in order to do transactions. Yeah, So we created again the arrival area, then the picking zone. Yeah? Goods will arrive in the arrival area, then we move them to the picking location. And once we do the picking and we will start doing the shipping for our customer, yeah? we will move them from the picking location to the shipping area with the picking process. No? Good, so this was in short, yeah, how you create some inventory locations. Of course, as I said, you can do the, the same in different pages, but I find it way nicer, the warehouse navigator, because it somehow keeps everything together. You know? Now we will have a more detailed session where we will go in depth about the different settings that we can and parameters that we can apply to to the warehouse yeah different visibility controls part availability controls put away controls yeah, capacities and conditions we will go through this in a subsequent video but for now we managed to create the three location numbers that we needed for the process and next we will proceed with the customer order creation and uh, delivering the customer order to our customer. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of the day. Till next time. Bye.